back in Arizona. Yay! Back in the United States. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After, after your jaunt in Bangkok. Yeah, we got work to do. Work to do. Yeah. Work to do, and then um, we've got tow trucks to build. Yeah. And uh, fiberglass fabrication to uh, establish. Yeah. And staff to employ. We got lots and, of them. Uh, yeah, 50 million other projects. There is. I think yeah, we're definitely going to be quite a bit. And um, now, what do you think about doing YouTube? Is it going to be worthwhile too? Is it uh, Rusty doing the YouTube? Ah, oh, yeah, I think that's a must. Okay, yeah, yeah we're going to do YouTube. Now, if you're watching this, we decided to do YouTube. <laughs> so I've just picked Stevie up from the airport in Tucson. Stevie's just arrived back from three months in Bangkok. Yeah. So uh, now the work begins. So for those of you that haven't caught up, uh, a few things have taken, sort of taken development over the last uh, two or three months. So Stevie and I have been talking about building a dedicated four-wheel drive off-road tow truck for servicing our part of Arizona and the surrounding area because there is a need for that and uh, that and cash flow and other ideas were spawned from that so um, we've put together a, we're putting together a tow truck company as well so we've already bought one tow truck we're going down to Phoenix tomorrow to look at another tow truck so we'll shoot some video of that and so we're establishing a, a towing business as well alongside of the fiberglass fabrication business so uh, it's it's exciting. It's, we're uh, we're excited about it. it. Should be a bit of fun. Why is it not recording? Ah, here we go. It's recording. Take two. Mario <laughs> painting the walls in the uh, workshop. This will be the smoko room, and I'll back up a little bit here. Toilets right there, and female far end, male ascent. So yeah, you were just. Um, I don't know what we'll do down this area, You'd probably be storage, but yeah, we'll just have smoko room in here for the guys when we do get the fiberglass and the uh, fabrication happening in here. So uh, yeah, just we got some paint that was inherited when purchased the property. It's not white, which would have been nice for a reflection, but it's a beige, so hey, it won't show the dirt so much when there is a little bit of dirt and dust from the wind blowing uh, sand from outside, and uh, yeah, it just makes that area a little bit tidy. Looking very good. Hey, I was doing a good job on a hot day. I'm picking it, we're probably in the uh, low 30s, maybe 33, 34, guess. It's warm in here. Oh, yeah. To go on, or into, the old 1987 square body shed tow truck, two wheel drive. And he's working on a door here, not me, but uh, one of the other guys is working on the door, just getting uh, it ready for um, painting up. Carlos is doing a fantastic job. We won't need to paint it, it'll have a shine on this chassis. Yeah. Have a nice and shiny. Gotta get all the grease off before I start wire wheeling. Yeah. Beautiful sunny day in uh, southeast Arizona. Mario working away in the background. And I'm just working on, uh, we're both working on speaker. Uh, the old a uh, UTVs, or I suppose ATVs as well. Uh, 
Marty has just gone around the corner to uh, wash off some of the sanding he's doing. He's on the finer grade. I'm still on the coarse one, 150. I've ended up putting, because it had some uh, little flaws in it, so I've ended up pulling um, some gel coat in. And uh, now I'm just in the process of sanding that down. And um, I've already done this one here, which you probably can't see because it's I'm putting sunlight. There we go. And uh, so you can see that one. So I've got to sand with a finer grade. And uh, here's some audio, it's just brought those ones back and he's seen it, yeah, so yeah, so we're just going through the grades, I think that's about 400 at the moment, is it 400? 400, 400 yes. 400, huh? wet and dry, so then uh, once we've got all that done, then we'll just go down 600, 800, 1000, 1500 and we should have some shiny um, speaker moulds. We've got some speaker moulds ready to lay up. Glass is cut, and Mario's gone and torn all the edges, so that's all done. Twelve of those, it's all uh, 225. Hey Mario! Hey, how's it going? Oh, Anyone all, all around the edge? Just that, you know, can feel that there? Um, yeah. yeah, just in that edge to stop the air bubbles a bit. If you push it in, you're going to squeeze it out in the air bubbles that are in there. Mm -hmm. Just keep moving away from there, once you've got it in. Um, and at the same time, um, I, I really want to do a whole lot, mix it up, and then get it in. I think that we will be quick enough, and that the time that you'll take applying the shorts to each of those, I should have one reasonably well done, well covered. So, once again, the barrel roller with the screw probably get. Um, reason it goes off in here, so we've got to clean it out reasonably regular, but it shouldn't go off the top. Um, I really mean you just need to go with a hex tool and just pretty much cut it all out. You can't just run it on the wire wheel, not because we've got one here yet, because it's aluminium, it's soft, and the wire wheel is steel, and it just wears the outside. Lots of little bits of glass because I don't have any uh, robings. <laughs> well, I've got a chop strand mat. We're going to chop it up into little bits and then tear it to use as shorts. These bits here is E glass, which is a motion that's used to glue the glass fibers together. This is uh, 225 grams a square meter. This glass, and this, which is quite fine glass, which is good, so it just makes it easy. Well, not so much easy, but it just makes it fluffy and suitable for um, using corners on uh, I'm doing moulds at the moment, but use it on parts that you're making as well. So. I'll put that here so you can see, and I'll just scrunch all of those up into little furry pieces. And then, um, so they don't blow away when there's wind that's coming inside now. And then, um, chuck in that container and I'm going to need plenty of it next, tomorrow and then, um, next week. Certainly a lot more next week. By that stage I should have the moulds finished for, um, making the speakers. Look at that. It's getting better, right? So these are actually glass shards, so it's not a problem at the moment, but tonight I'm going to go home and my fingers are going to be itchy as. First time with the gun, practicing with water. Have to get the scrubbing brush out next time, you'll be able to scrub 
on the walls. <laughs> Here I'm just putting some clean clay. They call this clean clay, it's like a putty or like a plasticine. It's not plasticine though, it's actually clay, special clay. It's moldable and um, so I'm putting it in, as you can see here, just putting it into fill a, just a slight gap underneath this fiberglass flange I've created because I mean, this, this part here is going to be with speaker housing it's going to be split into two so I'll tape this side here up just didn't want it to move so I'm just using aluminium tape what's happening here is I'm so putting this clean clay in just to uh, fill in the gap and I've, and, and I've got it down on the bottom here as well so I'm about to I'm just pushing it in with this with this, um, this bit of fiberglass steering stick just pushing it into that little gap underneath and um, then I'll come along with a uh, just a screwdriver and I'll scrape that off like so I'm just doing little bits at a time don't want to rush it well I want to rush it but I don't want to bugger it so I'll just scrape a bit down at a time into that corner pull away another scraping just a little bit at a time if you take too much of a bite it tends to all bundle up and the whole lot comes out. But I'll take a little bit of a time and oops, just stab that, pull it out. Now scrape down the side of the speaker. And here, yep, that's it there. And a little bit more. I reuse the clay, it's nothing, it's good, this, this clay is very good. I'm back, I'm just rolling this clean clay in my hand into a, uh, a rod, a thin rod. I want to get it thin because I don't need a lot on here. As you can see I've put a, a bead around here already. And the bottom side of this has already been taped up so um, there's no gap, I'm trying to minimise the gap between the fiberglass flange here and the uh, speaker housing. Then I'll heat it up to soften the clean plate. Take it in again. Oops, my heat's coming from the top too. Just forcing it into of a void underneath between the two, between the flange and the housing. I scrape it off. Just see how I do it. Others may do it totally different. I'm interested to know how they do it. If it's a better way. I'm always willing to learn. I think it's better instruments back in New Zealand, but back in New Zealand and not in Arizona. I'm going to get as square as possible in this corner. I'd like to make it harder for me when I um, do the next side, this side around, around here. Make it harder when I put that otherwise. Alright, that's a bit done. I'm going to go ahead and have a cup of coffee. So... Ready up.
taking the uh, bearings off, take the brake drum off, yeah. and it looks like, um, yeah, it looks, Mario, it looks like, uh, sorry about the sun in the uh, camera there, but it looks like there's quite a bit of oil, so the uh, seals let go that um, it's, then it stops the uh, oil from the diff running into the um, brake line, uh, into the brake pad, so yeah, that's what's happened. And it swelled up, locked up, and that's it. So you got to take all the brake pads off, brake clean, give them a good burn out, <clears throat> roughen them up with a bit of sandpaper. Same with the drum. The drum looks pretty good actually. That looks pretty good. And um, yeah, probably repack the bearings. I don't know what the bearings are like. Repack the bearings. Uh, look good, and, uh, just repack the bearings, have to get some grease, and uh, put it all back together again. Uh, correction, um, end of the day, bearings don't need to be re-greased because it's oil, it, thinks it lubricates the bearings. So I uh, don't need to worry about that, just got to make sure that we've got plenty of oil. Looks like we're going to be going into the rain. We're actually somewhere in Phoenix still, I think. Yep, Phoenix, yeah. on the outskirts of Phoenix. Yeah, yep. Just grabbed a, uh, a drink and a burger from McDonald's. And um, yeah, and that's when Rusty uh, realised, hang on, you've been Burger walking. King. We don't burger do King, is that what it was? Okay. Uh, we don't generally do I just McDonald's. wasn't looking where we were going, I was just eating. Well, that's probably why there was no chicken in there. <laughs> There was no McChicken in yeah, your... Yeah, uh, no McChicken. There wasn't any ch McChicken yeah. in, your, in your Burger King no, burger. Really? No, really? That right. sucks. You'll have to ask mm. for McChickens in your, in yeah. your Burger King burger next time. I, yeah, didn't see the dude with the bow tie and the uh, goatee. That's one down. One Another down. one to go. At least when we're driving into the rain. We can't really see anything here at the moment, but you can see it's black over the back. I don't know which is south and which is north here. I don't know how well this one will work, doesn't even Oh have no, yeah, crikey, yeah, we'll just end up with scrape marks across the window. Oh, and um, I'm going to step back here because there's a little bit of a story to tell. Nothing to do with a shopping cart, but you see how the tow truck's parked at the moment. The Stu actually had it parked up right in that car parking space just there. And we went into. BKs, came out, I'd parked the, uh, the uh, Julie over here, and mm, came back, and here we go, roll down the hill, oh, not to there, to there, roll down through the car park, and that's where it parked, so we've got a little bit of a problem with a hydraulic brake lock on it, it's bleeding past somehow. Rust in it. Now this truck apparently originally came from Utah. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a walk around and talk to you a little bit about some of the things we're going to do to this air machine. Okay guys, like I said, this old girl, 1984 Chevy 2500. It's got a uh, big block 454 in it. It was a diesel. The diesel got pulled out at some point in its life. I'm gathering that most of the mileage has been done on the diesel. As for the uh, yeah, 454 that's in it, how many miles on that? 
runs pretty good. We drive it back from Phoenix. Uh, it has a little bit of Oh, yes, Clifford. Just going to give the uh, the old girl a bit of a uh, bit of a clean down, having already applied the greaser. adjacent to it. Coming out so much better than I thought it was. All the bees are coming out. That's good there, Cliff. That's great. Even them holes are coming clean. Excellent. I'm going to put the bit of the paint removal as well. It is, eh? Hey? The old paint's not sticking very well. Thirty-five thousand miles. Had the diesel pulled out. Got a four-five-four Chevy V8 in there, and 